League of Women Voters Anoka Blaine Coon Rapids area welcomes viewers, candidates, and community members to this Meet the Candidates Forum. The forum is for those running in the 2024 election for Coon Rapids City Council Ward 4. I'm Linda Rogers, forum moderator, and a member of League of Women Voters Anoka Blaine Coon Rapids area, sponsor of this forum. I live in Anoka and cannot vote for either of these candidates. This forum is about informing voters. It's an opportunity to hear from candidates on important issues and compare their ideas. The League of Women Voters does not support or oppose political parties, does not support or oppose candidates for office. The League's goal is simply that each of you will vote. Thank you to Coon Rapids CTN for recording the forum and making it available for multiple showings and online. Editing is only authorized for official media reporting. Edited clips of candidate forums may not be used for partisan political purposes. <clears throat> Voter questions have been submitted online in advance and no additional questions will be taken from the audience during the event. Candidates for Coon Rapids City Council Award 4 are Christopher Geisler and Blake Miskwick. All candidates for this race were invited to participate in the forum, and we're happy that all candidates agreed to participate. Welcome, Christopher Geisler and Blake Miskwick. We'll begin with two general questions that were provided to the candidates in advance, followed by questions from the public submitted online. We'll end with closing statements from each candidate. Candidates will rotate answering questions first, and I've asked them to please correct me if I make an error in guiding their rotation. They will have up to 90 seconds to answer each of the first two questions. We'll begin with Christopher Geisler. What is your motivation to run for this office and what experience or knowledge would help you serve effectively? Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. Events like this provide a critical venue for the public to get to know their candidates. And I'd also like to thank my fellow candidates here for Coon Rapids for participating in this and other forums. My name is Christopher Geisler and I'm running for Coon Rapids City Council Ward 4. I'm running for this seat because I believe that being involved and engaged in your community is the best way to give back to it and to ensure that it is the best that it can be. That's exactly why in 2017 I joined the Transportation Advisory Board as a citizen representative, and also why in 2019 I joined the Planning Commission here in Coon Rapids. These two roles have given me a significant amount of experience working with staff, ordinances, law, and the general governments uh, of a public entity like this city. In addition to that, I also work as an IT technologist and IT auditor at a global manufacturing company as my day job. In both of these roles, I've learned how to find consensus between conflicting parties, learned how to achieve long-term goals with short-term moves, and how to get deep into the details while keeping the ultimate goal in mind. It's with these skills that I'm equipped to handle the business of this city, serve the needs of the citizens, and ensure that we all have the best place to live and work. Thank you. Blake, Miss Quick, what is your motivation to run for this office, and what experience or knowledge would help you serve effectively? Thank you. Thanks for asking that question. And much like my opponent, uh, I would like to start just by um, thanking everyone for having this opportunity to be here today and uh, thanking the League of Women Voters for what they do and being able to put this message out into the community. And so uh, my motivation in running for this office is uh, it's similar to my opponent. And I believe that uh, in order to have a, a greater sense of community, I believe public service is, uh, is one of those ways that you can achieve that and that's one of the main reasons why I chose to run for this position and um, it's, uh, it's also been a big theme of mine uh, throughout my, uh, my adult life and even as a young adult uh, uh, joining the military at a young age at the, at the age of 17 and so um, service has been uh, a part of my life uh, from a young age and so um, I'll use that experience and knowledge to help me serve effectively uh, as the next uh, Coon Rapids Ward 4 City Council member. Blake Miskwick, what are your goals for Coon Rapids' future? 
My goals for the future of Coon Rapids, uh, it's very simple. I, I've broken it down into uh, three main categories. Uh, number one being public safety. Uh, I support our law enforcement 100% and uh, all of our emergency uh, service personnel. And I believe that we need to give them the tools uh, necessary to get the job done. And uh, number two, uh, I believe in, uh, in spending wisely and uh, fiscal responsibility and uh, and during tough times that, that we're facing right now, we just need to remember um, uh, to use um, the funds that we have available uh, in the best way possible. And number three, I, I want to maintain or, or even improve the city streets and parks. And um, being a lifelong Minnesota resident, I think we can all agree that you're driving down the road sometimes and the street might not be as nice as it could be. And so uh, we got those potholes to worry about here in Minnesota, but uh, that's definitely one of the things that uh, I, I want to uh, uh, improve or at least maintain <laughs> uh, moving forward. Christopher Geisler, what are your goals for Coon Rapids future? Thank you. I think my largest goal would be prepare the city for its long-term future. One consistent issue you see with local budgets is the tendency to look at things in one or maybe a two-year timeline. This can leave a city for unprepared for surprises like a pandemic or unable to tackle large one-time needs. We have done well here in Coon Rapids to plan for some larger needs like the new fire station as a great example, but we really need to think about the services our city provides to its residents. Our aging population has led to a significant increase in support calls to our fire department, and over the last 10 years, it's likely those calls will continue to increase as they have. We need to ensure we're ready to deal with the coming changes of the next decade, as well as what we have done for the last decade. We also need to be ready for a continued natural growth of the city. By 2050, the predictive models and city staff estimate that our population will go to around 71,000 and add roughly 60 new households per year over the next 25 years. While this growth may come in fits and starts and not all at once, an additional seven to 9,000 residents will have an impact to the city services. We need to plan accordingly. We want to ensure that we're ready for what's coming and we want to make the path to that future as smooth and as predictable as possible for citizens and businesses. Finally, I want to ensure that the city is easy to do business with. There are many places where undue friction has been created or where the city's code is not kept up with changes in how the world works. I want to ensure that the city attracts residents and businesses to be a great place to live, work, and shop. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. We'll move now to questions submitted online by the public. These responses are limited to one minute. And we'll begin with Christopher Geisler. What is your opinion of the current budget proposal? Would you make any changes? If so, what would you change? Thank you. The current budget proposal, in my opinion, is actually very well crafted with city staff. Um, they've taken into account the fact that we've lost a lot of pand pandemic funding and one-time funding over the years. LGA funding has been shifting around quite a bit. And in my opinion, we have a pretty hard, hard pace to run with, considering that a lot of our neighbors are looking at double-digit percentage tax increases, yet in the city here, we've managed to keep it well below 10%. I think that's a good practice. I want to see us continue to do that, but I also want to see us to set a timeline out for five, 10 years as not necessarily committing to it, but setting it long-term to get an idea of what we can count on long-term. The one thing I do think that's missing from the budget though, however, is that the fire department has been asking for a training member to utilize the new resources of the investment of Fire Station 3. I think that's a missed opportunity, and while I do understand uh, the desire to keep that uh, ask low, I think that's something that could have been added. Thank you. Blake Misquick, what is your opinion of the current budget proposal? Would you make any changes? If so, what would you change? Thank you. And uh, much like my opponent, uh, I do believe that we're on the right track. And um, you actually hit the nail on the head there, uh, speaking about the um, the increases for other cities, well, Coon Rapids has virtually uh, remained um, uh, not, not unchanged, but uh, at, at a smaller pace. And uh, I believe that we're doing a great job uh, in that regard. And um, just over the past uh, few years, we've, we've been able to um, 
what I like to say, uh, spend wisely. And I believe that we are doing that. Um, uh, as far as the future uh, projects go, uh, I believe that we will be able to tackle those issues uh, as, they, as, they, um, uh, as they develop. And so um, those are some of the things I, I do believe that uh, we will be able to tackle those challenges as they uh, present themselves. Blake Misquick, what do you know about large budgets and finances that will help you be a city council member? Thank you. Uh, what do I know about large budgets? And, um, you know, to be perfectly honest, uh, I am a newer candidate, and uh, this is my first uh, time in the political uh, uh, swimming pool, so to speak. And uh, actually, uh, as a new candidate, I am not uh, very well versed on that issue, but uh, I will definitely look into it and, and uh, uh, we'll have to research that more. Christopher Geisler, what do you know about large budgets and finances that will help you be a city council member? Part of my day job is auditing the financials and financial controls of a large multi-billion dollar corporation. That's what I do every day. I work with my accountants all the time. And while that budget is significantly larger than the city, it has taught me a lot about how to read a balance sheet, how to read a financial statement, and how to budget accordingly, especially with fixed budgets. And that's where my time at TAB has taught me quite a bit of learning how fiscal sources coming in through either uh, laws or things passed by Congress, as well as stable funding sources. That has taught me how to really manage through and understand when we need more, we have to ask for more. And when we ask for more, we put that on our citizens. And so between being able to audit, to find gaps, to find opportunities to improve in my professional day job, as well as understanding how to work with staff, how to work with a fixed pie of resources and get the most out of it and the best bang for our buck, that's what I've been doing since 2017. Again, Christopher Geisler. What are your ideas to help make housing more affordable for people who want to live in Coon Rapids? Thank you. The first and best solution for making housing affordable is simply building more of it. Uh, when you increase the supply, it meets the demand, which allows for less price, uh, upward pressure on pricing. And that's been a significant challenge here in the city as what, uh, as we've seen develops, developments go in that used to be in the early 2000s, maybe $150,000, $200,000 single family homes are now going for $350,000. That's really, really challenging. And so my approach, like what I've been doing on the Planning Commission, has been to increase the housing supply of all types some of it high density to allow more apartments and renters to enter in and start their home ownership journey, as well as meeting uh, 65 plus and townhomes and single family developments. Those are all things that we can look forward to increasing the affordability by increasing the supply within the city. Blake Misquick, what are your ideas to help make housing more affordable for people who want to live in Coon Rapids? Thank you, and uh, I believe that uh, in order to make housing more affordable in Coon Rapids, um, what I would say is that uh, we need to uh, give uh, some more incentives uh, to those, uh, and especially uh, those that may be first-time home buyers. Uh, I know that uh, the federal government has uh, a program, and I believe uh, this don't quote me on, I believe that the state of Minnesota has a program as well, and uh, it would be nice uh, for Coon Rapids to have something similar to that, and I think that would be very helpful in, uh, in building up uh, that uh, situation. Again, Blake Misquick, what do you think of the city's current sustainability offerings and practices? Are there changes you would like to see? Thank you. And uh, the city's current sustainability practices. Uh, like, uh, like any city, uh, what you strive to do is you, you want to move forward and you want to be able to uh, have something 
greater than what you had in the past. And so um, I believe that this is a very important topic. And when you, when you look at uh, the money that's being spent this way, uh, what you're really looking at is, uh, is the future of Coon Rapids. Uh, you, you don't want to be replacing uh, uh, infrastructure every few years because we're not uh, sustaining or we're not uh, maintaining uh, those items. And so it, it really comes down to um, making wise choices in those areas and making sure that that stuff is available uh, for our future uh, residents. Christopher Geisler, what do you think of the city's current sustainability offerings and practices? Are there changes you would like to see? Well, I, first of all, I'm excited that, that we have a sustainability staff member on and the Sustainability Commission has been working with them and making great strides to improve what's going on in the city. Uh, the fact that we've achieved step five of the Green Step Cities, the fact that we are solar smart certified, uh, the fact that we've updated some of our local ordinances to accommodate new and changing things on either rooftop solar or EV charging, or the fact that we're even getting recommendations for uh, developers to consider, not require, just consider these opportunities. Uh, those are things that I think are great within the city that are forwarding our, our ability to be more sustainable as a community as a whole. One factor of sustainability though that I think we should focus on is resiliency. And we can see that down south right now after the impacts of the weather down there. Climate resiliency is a key thing that Minnesota needs to prepare for. Not necessarily a hurricane, but severe freeze and warming cycles can damage our infrastructure significantly, both water and road. And I think that's an area where we could go deeper. Again, Christopher Geisler. How do you plan to engage with and represent all members in our increasingly diverse community? Thank you. First of all, it's been simple as door knocking and connecting and having conversations with them and being available. Uh, I pride myself on being available for either, through multiple methods for communities, but also getting out in the community. I think events like Summer in the City are a phenomenal way for every area or every city every area within the city to meet with their council members, meet with city staff and do an events like that. I think also being available at other community events like our 4th of July celebration, like uh, movies in the park and other, other activities really help just let people know that you're there and you're available to them. But those face-to-face -face conversations are really the best way to be there and be available. Um, and that's what I would seek to do. Like Miss Quick, how do you plan to engage with and represent all members in our increasingly diverse community? Thank you. And uh, yes, this is something that I look forward to doing. And uh, I believe that uh, my opponent actually uh, hit the nail right on the head again. And I agree completely uh, with uh, the different events that we have going on in Coon Rapids. Uh, that is a great representation of what uh, the community is all about. And uh, I attended uh, a few of those events over the summer, and it really was a, a great uh, time and a good get together. And you do get to meet uh, key people from the city, uh, council members, uh, as well as uh, different people uh, from uh, anything from the fire department to, uh, to the police department. And so I believe it's uh, the continuation of those events and, uh, and adding, uh, you know, possibly um, so some different types of events that we might not be used to. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, it definitely is the way to um, engaging with the community. And here's a twist on that previous question. Blake Misquick, regardless of who wins this election, the city council will be comprised entirely of men. How will you ensure women's voices are heard on the council? Thank you. That's a great question. And um, we, uh, it's unfortunate, actually, that uh, we do not have uh, any uh, women. Uh, and, uh, you know, the famous quote of uh, woman's intuition. And uh, we could use that on the city council for sure. And I guess um, we, could hold, uh, we could hold some different events and, and actually uh, something geared more towards the, uh, the feminine uh, uh, persuasion and uh, definitely look forward to um, representing uh, both uh, male and female and, um, and uh, anything in between. 
And so, uh, yes, uh, I believe that uh, it, uh, it is unfortunate that we do not have uh, uh, any um, females in the upcoming uh, elections, but uh, I do believe that we can still uh, have that uh, touch and reach that community. Christopher Geisler, regard regardless of who wins this election, the city council will be comprised entirely of men. How will you ensure women's voices are heard on the council? Thank you. Uh, it, it is unfortunate that both of our uh, women city council members are retiring or moving on uh, to other activities, and we, we will have an all-male council uh, regardless. I do think that uh, I would like to see more candidates come forward, and I would love to engage our citizens if, who are interested in pulling them forward, and that's one way to get better voices heard. But I also don't see my answers being any different of connecting with the community, because the community is the community. It doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter your expressed gender, doesn't matter your expressed orientation, faith, whatever. You're a member of our community, and so I view it as hearing from my citizens, hearing from my constituents. It, I, I don't, who you are, what you are, who you believe in, how you vote does not matter to me because you're, if I win, you would be my constituent and I would seek to represent you. So my first thing would be to have a conversation no matter what. Christopher Geisler, would you support workers, both public and private, in fair negotiations and in the process of unionizing their workplaces? Uh, unionizing is one of the great rights that this country has given our workers and staff, whether it be municipal staff, whether it be businesses within the city itself. I, I, I believe that if a workforce dis, has decided that they want to unionize and that is the best use of their uh, collective bargaining power, then I believe that they should be supported and allowed to do so. And that is a conversation between the staff and or the staff of that business and the ownership. Uh, with regards to the city staff, if they decided to organize, uh, that would be also something that I would be open to considering. I believe that when it comes to negotiating a contract and working with two different parties, something that I do in my day job, I can't put it akin to both of us have three cards and together we need to make a poker hand that wins. And that's how negotiations should work in a productive and happy environment as everybody comes together to find the best solution for all parties involved. And so yes, I would support. Like Ms. Gwick, would you support workers, both public and private, in fair negotiations and in the process of unionizing their workplaces? Thank you. And I, uh, first thing I have to say is yes. And uh, I'm a former uh, union member myself uh, and being a part of the 120 as a local there in Blaine and uh, I was uh, a part of the union for about seven years as a, uh, a semi uh, class A uh, semi driver and uh, yes I believe that uh, it's important to support that and uh, I believe in the workers uh, right to unionize. Again Blake Misquick. Will you accept the outcome of the election results, win or lose? Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, this is an important topic. Uh, I know um, more and more people have been uh, uh, having less faith uh, in, the, in the results. And uh, I believe that, uh, that that's unfortunate. But uh, win or lose, uh, I, I will accept uh, uh, the outcome of this race. And I believe it's important to, to uh, maintain um, uh, that, um, uh, that sense of, uh, we'll call it community for lack of a better word. But uh, yes, uh, I, I, I believe that in order to move forward and to have what's best for the city of Coon Rapids, uh, yes, I will accept uh, the outcome uh, regardless uh, of what that may be. Christopher Geisler, will you accept the outcome of the election results, win or lose? Absolutely. Uh, I believe that Anoka County and Minnesota as a whole has a great elections process. Our staff here have done very well to bring educate our election judges. The league itself has provided phenomenal resources for folks to understand how the elections process works here, not only in the city, but in the county and the state as well. Uh, the fact that we have paper ballots with machine tabulation means we get faster results 
with an actual record of what happened. And that is the best way to get this done. Um, so I would absolutely accept the results and I believe that we have the processes in place to ensure that everyone who votes will have their vote counted. Switching gears, Christopher Geisler, research on toxicity of PFAs has been in the news. What are your ideas to keep Coon Rapids safe from the threat of PFAs? Uh, forever chemicals are one of those topics that is extremely challenging. And that's where I actually, I'll hearken back to our Sustainability Commission and funding them and resourcing them in ways to divest of the city's in uh, putting PFAs either in the community, in our resources, in our infrastructure, wherever possible is the best way to solve that problem. I also think some awareness could be uh, sent out. There are a lot of alternatives now that are just as good um, to those forever chemicals. And I, at, in the long term, I do think that coming up with public service, public advisory, and programs to help people realize what are the risks and what are the viable alternatives that are not cost prohibitive uh, would be the best use of the city's resources. Lake Misquick, research on toxicity of PFAs has been in the news. What are your ideas to keep Coon Rapids safe from the threat of PFAs? Thank you. And uh, yes, the threat of PFAs, it, uh, it has been um, in the news lately. And uh, I, think, um, I think knowledge is half the battle. So I think uh, what would be uh, the best thing is to just uh, to to uh, gather some awareness on this topic and actually uh, just try to make sure that the city and and uh, not just Coon Rapids but uh, but but sure uh, it makes sure that the population is aware of this and uh, I believe that that uh, knowledge or knowing is is half the battle and so if we can spread the awareness and just let people know that this is out there and that it's it's uh, it's uh, the real deal. And that um, just by that alone, I believe that uh, we can definitely uh, keep uh, the city of Coon Rapids safe. We have time for just one more question. Blake Misquick, how can you best leverage your skills to affect positive change in local politics? Thank you. And uh, how can I leverage my skills? Uh, well, I'm going to lean a lot on my military service. Uh, I was in the Army for 12 years. I was deployed three times overseas. And uh, during those deployments, uh, I learned how to think and I, uh, and I learned how to act on my feet. And uh, those things have helped me quite a bit throughout the years and uh, are definitely going to help me here uh, in service to the city of Coon Rapids. And um, the one thing that I, that I would like to say is that um, uh, that service has been uh, a part of my life since I was young, and that uh, this really, um, this is, a, it's a really a great honor for me and a, and a great opportunity for me uh, if I do end up uh, uh, with uh, this position uh, in November. And so uh, I would just like to say that I will use that knowledge uh, accordingly, and uh, 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 hopefully there's no lives on the line here in the in the city council. But uh, yes, uh, having to. Uh, work quickly and work under pressure is something that I'm very familiar with. Christopher Geisler, how can you best leverage your skills to affect positive change in local politics? As I've mentioned earlier, a lot of my skills already are serving the community. Uh, at the Transportation Advisory Board, I sit with an, a board of 36 people from all around the metro of all different political persuasions, coming from county, city, citizen, modal, and I'm seen as somebody to ask questions to and to get into the policy wonky details of how things are working. I've served on the executive commission there. I've uh, helped write the transportation policy plan for 2050 that's coming forward. And I've gotten into the nitty gritty details and those are the skills and experiences that I have to make sure that the city operates as effectively as possible of getting into those wonky deep details and making sure that they work for our citizens and for our businesses. I also have the experience of working with the financial dollars to the level of what the city handles. That's something that I do every day and that I've worked with uh, over many, many, or my 17 years working at the manufacturing company. I understand how to make those things work and how to connect to get to the goals we want. It's time for our candidates to take a breath because we'll be ending 
Our forum now with closing statements. Christopher Geisler will begin. Thank you, Linda, and thank you again to the League for hosting this and other candidate forums. I also want to thank the other candidates that participated, not only here for Blake, as well as the other forums for the city. I encourage everyone to watch these forums for all races that you can vote for, and I would recommend also that everyone consider other resources like vote411.org, the profiles in the newspaper, Metro Moore's Chamber of Commerce's website, and NPR voter resources. These are all great places to learn more about candidates on your ballot before you cast your vote. You can also find out more about me and my campaign on these resources, as well as on my website, votegeisler.com. I'm Christopher Geisler. I'm running for Coon Rapids City Council Ward 4, and I ask for your vote. I will, be, I will bring to a close to a decade of experience serving Coon Rapids in volunteer roles at TAB and Planning Commission to the City Council. I will use my professional skills and extensive experience to ensure our city will operate smoothly and efficiently for the next four years. From zoning to planning to budget and IT security, you can count on me to bring my skills to bear for you and for the city. You can vote early right now or on Election Day, November 5th. Thank you. And Blake, Ms. Quick, your closing statement. Thank you, and I just want to uh, mimic what my opponent was saying. I, I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for holding this forum and, and, and having uh, this opportunity to be here today. And uh, I, in my uh, closing remarks here, uh, what I just, I would like to hit the three topics that I really wanted to, to hit home. And basically it was uh, public safety is one of the things that, that I'm very passionate about. And definitely 100% behind our, our law enforcement and our, our emergency services personnel. And uh, secondly, the fiscal responsibility and just choosing to spend wisely as we move forward. And, and in Coon Rapids, uh, We've done a, a very good job, uh, actually, and so uh, it's one of the things that I look forward to contributing to. And uh, thirdly, I uh, definitely would like to maintain or even improve our, our city streets and our parks. And so uh, um, I look forward to uh, being a, a part of the city council, and uh, I would just like to finish with my, my website is uh, blakeforcrward4.com, and thank you, and uh, don't forget to vote. League of Women Voters thanks the candidates for speaking to voters about issues and for running for Coon Rapids City Council, Ward 4. Thanks audience members, viewers, and those who submitted questions. Find links to all forums at lwvabcmn.org. General election is Tuesday, November 5th, and early voting is underway. You can vote early at Coon Rapids City Hall, or the Anoka County Elections Office. Please see the Coon Rapids website for more information. You can register to vote, update your registration, find information on voting options, and find your polling place online. All at mnvotes.org or the Minnesota Secretary of State website. You can also register or update your registration at your polling place on election day. If you're interested in League of Women Voters, visit our website at lwvabcmn.org. Women and men, age 16 and older, are welcome to join. Your vote is your voice. Make your voice heard by voting on or before November 5th. <laughs>